Hello everyone, Chris here, and this is going to be a build order video for a 30 plus 2 plus X amount of villagers, Fast Imp, Monk, Treb. This is generally a very very good build order in terms of being up fast enough to have a castle in case you need it defensively, but still be an Imp at a reasonable time around 21-30, around approximately that mark, depending on the Civ you are, determines if you need 4 or 5 around that area of villagers in the castle age. It's much better than doing something like a 32 plus 2 plus 2, that thing just simply sits you in Dark Age too long. If someone's doing some very fast aggression, you are really going to suffer if that happens, and your castle is going to be pretty useless. So that's why you want to have a maximum of 30 population in Dark Age, even at that it's a bit of a stretch. This build order is very very strong, it's a maximum aggression really. It will give you some really good power spikes. If you have a sieve of blood printing, that's what you want to really be doing this with. Of course, with other monk techs, you know, Sanctity, Redemption, and Atonement is quite important if you're VS another Civ that does have Atonement. If you have those, a very, very strong strategy, you get a massive power spike in Imperial. So I'm just going to put a builder on screen now. I don't want this to be too long of a video. Of course, this is a fast imp, so we're going to be here for quite a while doing the build. So, just going to try to make it as fast as possible. We're doing this with Spanish today. Spanish, good monk tech tree, they have a good bonus for it. There's various things with going unique units that could turn into fast imps instead, depending on what happens in Dark Age, I'll go over at the time. But Spanish, very very good for this, and a nice generic Civ for us. Their faster building is slightly useful, but it's not enough to really throw out the economy balance. So this is going to be the generic version. If you have a Civ with a stronger economy, like Aztecs perhaps, then you could of course get away with doing things you know, a little bit differently, a little bit faster. So, without further ado, let's just jump straight into this build. It's easier to explain things as I go. I should also mention that this is a slightly cheated version of Arena. Because I was getting a lot of maps that were either tedious, bugged, or just bad to perform builds on. Did I send them both in the same direction? I decided to make uh, an RMS script which basically just moves everything closer. It just makes things in general easier, permanently spawn 3 deer. Just that kind of thing, that just makes it a bit easier to do these guides, but of course I'm not expecting you have a perfect map in one of your multiplayer games. So usual 3 on sheep start, and then 4 on wood. I don't need to scout outside because with this um, cheat map, my sheep spawn inside. I'm just doing this to kill a bit of time, assuming that you're looking outside to try and find your stuff. But yeah, there's our sheep, there's our deer. We have boar somewhere, I hope. So the reason this video is in the advanced category is because you're going to have to push 3 deer as a minimum. As with all my build orders, I always go with pushing 3 deer because sometimes you'll have 3, sometimes you'll have 4. If you know how to do it with 3, then you know how to do it with 4. If you can only do it with 4 and it's too tight to do it with 3, then that could be pretty unfortunate. Each deer is a large help. So. Six sheep, four on wood, when he learns how to walk. And then we're going to do our usual stuff. At this point I built I sent the next villager to go build a house. What's up with this pathing? And then he'll then build the mill for the berries. I also add another one to the boar. I like to have eight taking my boar at any given time. So let's build the mill. You don't want to do this with a really risky map, you want to do this with a safe fish map. Ah, it's one of these lures. Not a very good lure in my opinion, but can't expect perfection. I only ever usually lure deer after I push in the first board. If I have a chance to lure them earlier, then it never usually works out. It usually gets in the way more than it helps. Oops. Agora. 
So, at this point around 17 pop, anytime as long as it's not all too close to the time we actually need it. I like to make my couple of houses. And we're actually going to be making three. Remember in the end we want to end up with four on berries. So now we have four on berries and now we're 19 population. 19 pop is when, as you, if you know me, I like to build a second lumber camp. So the reason we built three houses essentially is because we are going to be going up with quite a lot of population. Send the soldier back here. If we had any sense, we could get her to build a lumber camp, but we weren't thinking that far ahead. So four on wood now. We're going to have two lumber camps with four on each. This is pretty important. We're just going to delete our walls in the meantime. Let's get if we have any back resources we may need. As I said, this is an advanced build order. You're going to be pushing deer and you're going to be shifting villagers around. That's that's quite the overkill there. Let's push another. Oops. So now we have our four on this lumber camp. Then we want to do three on stone. If you uh, know a 28 plus 2 castle drop into a unique unit, like uh, Kong's in this case is spin, then this is actually a very very similar build order to that, just with a couple extra on gold at the start and then some shifting around later. So if you start with something like, I don't know, you want to go Kong's but your VS is Civ that you suspect is going to do something else, maybe if you're a VS Portuguese and you know you're worried about them going triple monastery maybe you don't think Kong's are going to work out too well for you. Then you could always, you know, do a fallback, add a couple more to gold. If there's enough distance and you think you're quite safe, you just got your map is good enough to do this. So after three on stone, we go for four on gold. I like to add as many farms as possible. I like to try and have seven. Eight is very, very good. But 7 is also fine. You need a lot of farms to fast imp. I suspect I am missing a sheep somewhere. Ah, no, I'm not. This villager is trapped. Trust the pathing. And we don't quite have the amount of farms that we need, so I'm gonna add another one here. Let's also make sure these guys are working efficiently. This is essentially our Dark Age so far. We scouted that they're not, not at least, you know, unbelievably close. There we go. Everything here seems to be working well enough. So, we chose Spanish because obviously not really any equal bonus, but they are a good sieve for this because they have the unique tech. We have reused Burn Reuse, so monks maybe not be the best, but this is of course an AI, so I'm not caring about it. But use your judgement, don't get out of your doubts, don't do fast end monks against the sieve that's either going to aggress you early or can do monks much better than you. So now that we're in Feudal Age, we're going to do one to stone and one to gold. And we are Spanish, so we could only use two villagers to build these. If you're Spanish, you could do this where two villagers build the buildings, one on each, and when the blacksmith's done, he moves on to the market, and it'll be done in time. If you're a regular save, of course, two villagers build the market, one villager builds the blacksmith. Keep scouting, you gotta make sure that you're safe. And we're going to add one farm. We don't want these villagers hanging around stragglers. We want to send them as soon as we can to gold. Basically, we want to really hammer on the gold. Get the first equal upgrades as well. 
when you hit feudal age, you could actually get double bit axe and horse gold right away because of course you are ahead in the economy. When I get horse collar is when I like to add another two farms. And what we're going to do farm count wise is we're going to queue up two more farms. And when we queue up two farms in the reseed, that's going to be it. We're not going to reseed any more farms. The reason I like to queue them up on the way up is just so I don't forget how many I've uh, reseeded if I'm manually reseeding them. Monday. We're going to want to build a house soon. We can only put four. In, we can afford to put four on stone because we do four on gold and dark age. It gives us an extra two population worth of time for these villagers to be working in dark age. So we collect more stone than you would if you're doing a twenty-eight plus two, where you do three on stone, two on gold, and then two on stone in feudal age. So we don't need to do two on stone in feudal age. Only one. It's not also good to scout out uh, scout out the relics. Relics are of course quite a big help. On the way up, I like to do the occasional thing. I like to sell 200 wood and buy 100 food. It gets you there that little bit quicker. But let's get ready to build our castle. With well, normal civ I would use 4 or 5 villagers, however many you want. With Spanish I usually use 3 or 4. You don't want to build this castle all too fast unless you are needing it to defend. That's uh, the benefit of it. You want to keep adding villagers to gold. If you have a lumber camp like this, it's always going to be quite useful if you want to just add a second mining camp. Don't get any yoke upgrades yet, but we're going to need gold mining when we click up to him. If you look at our resources, we're 1730 at the moment. 800 food, 700 gold. We're looking pretty solid for re uh, resources. So these two have finished with the gold. Uh, with the berries, sorry, I like to move them to gold. I want this castle to be... castle's about to be completed by the time this villager is. We're going to be just shy of food, but have enough gold. So it's fine to idle our TC just this little bit, because these villagers are probably holding all the food we need to click up. So let's just force garrison. So we have no reseeds left, so this villager that uh, finished with this farm, these can go to gold. With these villagers, I like to send them to wood. I like to have an extra two on wood. It's quite helpful. We only really want five farms in the end. Another one finished, move them to gold. We should be looking at having about 18 gold miners at this point by the time... 17, 18 is good. This farm's about to expire, so we're about to get another one on top of that. Get gold mining upgrade. Make sure we're building our monasteries. I like to open this one with triple monastery, although double is double's perfectly fine. I like to get a couple of upgrades on the way up, but I don't like to focus too much on them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six farms, so we can afford to lose another one. And there goes another one. Seven hurt gold, eighteen gold miners. Eighteen gold miners is quite a lot. But we need it right away to afford the tax. These guys need to sort themselves out a bit better. But we have the gold mining upgrade, which is helpful. And we have three monasteries. We could also sell a little bit of food if we wanted to. Selling a little bit of food is always quite useful. Start massing some monks. Remember the key technology we need is block printing. If we're something like, let's talk about some civs at the moment, if we're something like Burmese. <coughs> Burmese can do quite a lot of things, but one of the main things they're actually quite strong for is Aaron by Monk Treb. At this point, I would only add one or two monasteries, definitely not three. I would say maybe two is good, but not keeping both active, maybe getting upgrades in both. I'm only using one and occasionally a second one to make monks, and the rest of the time making Aaron by. As soon as you click up the Imperial Age, start making Iron Buy. When you hit Imp, start making some Trebs. You have a few Iron Buy, you have some Monks to back them up. A couple of Trebs, keep making Iron Buy again. It's a really strong strategy. That being said, it's um, the Iron Buy nerf recently on Wood has you know made that go downhill a little bit. But it's still not particularly weak, so keep an eye out for those kind of strategies. Fast State Monks applies to mainly not food-dependent units. 
Of course you want trebs and you're going to have monks of course so you're focusing on golden wood you're not going to have much food. If you try and get a lot of food then you're not going to have enough to make anything out of these buildings. Quick look at the other civs. Aztecs of course very very good for this and monks just get stronger with every upgrade. They also have a really really good dark age economy so they can click up incredibly fast. You can build this castle with 5 or 6 villagers and you'll still be able to click up right away. A bunch of other sets are quite useful. Malians. Malians get some very good bonuses. Their monks are also quite good. They have some nice, you know, cheap infantry options if you want to add them later on, like pikemen maybe. Pikemen can be really, really good for Malians doing fast in monks. Other sets, Slavs do have some bonuses, so those Slavs have a stronger economy, so it might be better for booming. Tunes can pull this off very well. Of course, their cheaper farms is a big bonus, as well as our monks just being very, very strong. So those are the kind of sets I would start considering this with. I've also pulled off a of Portuguese quite often. It's actually not as bad of a sieve as a lot of people think on Arena. Portuguese can be very, very strong. So, there are other options, but those are probably the main sieves you want to be practicing this one with. I like to make sure I have, you know, at least three monks. Ideally, I want more than that. I don't want to focus on things like getting redemption as quickly as I have here. So we hit Imp, queue up a couple of villagers, start making a trip. We sell a bit of resources here, just to get some upgrades that we need. I didn't realize that I had two villagers on stone. As I said, one villager on stone is nice, two is, two is okay. At this point I would start adding villagers towards wood. I wouldn't focus all too heavily on... You know, gold at this point, we only really need gold to kickstart this whole thing here off. I mean, even at this point, we're starting to get to the point where we don't need this many on gold. I wouldn't send these monks out quite like this. I would send them, you know, in a group, maybe when I've got the six massed up. But the important thing is to get the trebs out fast. Keep making sure that you're making villagers. Again, I'm making this guide, I'm not paying as much attention as I could be. Wood is just generally a good thing to have at the moment, because you could, you know, make more buildings with it, make more farms, add TCs if you want to this point. But yeah, at this point we have two trebs. We have five monks. Minute 24, we're already starting to trip them down. You know, still making monks. Uh, ideally, I like to have 10. You get Theoxy and have a lot more monks. It depends what unit they want to go and how your monk skills are. By this point, look at our resources. We could afford to keep making a couple more trips. We could add TC at this point, start adding economy. And afford to add some more farms. You know, we could actually 2 TC this at the same time as running three monasteries, making monks, castle making some trebs. We could even stay 1 TC and just add a bunch of farms right now. And we could even start adding in um, conquistadors if we're Burmese iron by wouldn't make farms to make them but you could stay on gold, hit more wood. So that's um, definitely an alternative. This is the point where it's kind of left your own free reign, you could add in whatever units you want. And yeah, hope you uh, practice this one quite a bit and you get used to it. So we're going to have a quick look at the achievements, I'm going to end this now. I'm not going to quite go over the follow on because of course this is VS and AI, there's no realistic situation here. You already have your units out and you have some of the upgrades that you need. From this point you could also get other economy upgrades. You get bow saw soon, you get heavy plow soon, you don't have the food but as I said you have the wood to add farms, you'll have it soon. If someone's 3 TC booming, at this point they're going to have to cancel Imperial Age. They're not going to have time to move their relics from their forward monastery back to the back, so you could break in, you could take out their monastery if they decide to take relics. You could just start converting a lot of things, there's not too much they could do about it. As I said, I would generally delay something like redemption until a little bit later. I just had to get it early in this case, but that's just what I felt like doing. If your VS aggression, redemption is definitely a very good one to get. You don't want to focus too much on massing the monks, you want to get the upgrades to counter whatever is attacking you as soon as you can. If something is, but if they're just free booming then you're already slamming on them with quite a bit of units. They need to start massing units and by this point, if they're only just starting, 
they've got to meet, you know, nine units. So it's going to be pretty difficult to counter. Very, very strong strategy if you have good strong civs. Again, with Spanish, I would get the Inquisition tech. Much faster for converting units. Very, very strong tech. Also Slavs with the melee armor if you choose not to boom. And there's some other civs with some other benefits. Saracens can be very good, as you saw in the middle of the castle age. Uh, middle of the way up to castle age, sorry. I sold 200, uh, 200 wood to buy 100 food. That is a pretty essential part of it because you do need that extra bit of food. You want to keep the amount of wood economy that you have at the time. So you're going to flow that wood. So you might as well sell it, buy a bit of food. You're going to be up a lot quicker with it. So if you're Saracens, you have a good bonus there as well. So let's quickly go to the achievements, end of the video. 41 villager high by minute uh, 24, 30 or something. Society stats, one castle obviously. Imperial time, 21, 41. That's not great, Imperial time. I was a bit late to a lot of things. But castle age, that's only about, um, well, would be exactly 50 seconds late for a 28 plus two. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's pretty, um, it's good enough Dark Age to get you up to Castle Age fast enough to at least build some defense. If someone's trying to go for some kind of like 28 plus 2 quite heavy aggression, if someone's going to go scouts and then into, you know, a forward because they have map control, they have monks out to get the relics and that kind of thing, this is definitely going to keep you very safe and you're going to be able to retaliate very heavily. And if someone's just straight booming, then you're going to hit them when it hurts. And you'll still have an economy. As you saw, we could, at that point, have just added a TC and just, you know, had two TC economy. 41 villagers at a second TC, you could turn that into 80 very, very quickly. So if you have the aggression, you have them on the back foot, they're stopping making villagers in their boom. They're uh, trying to mass army. So you're getting your villager count up at the same time as you're causing them heavy damage. Aside from that... That's about all there is to say on the strategy. Again, in a team game, this can be used as flank, but it's a bit risky. Of course, all in strategies are all, you know, quite a bit more risky as flanks. But as I demonstrated, it's not quite all in, so it's not, not that devastating in terms of suiciding in a team game because the enemy pocket is going to come and just wipe you out at the same time. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.